let's introduce the our expert yes, today. Um, yeah. He, we didn't have sound working properly, so he's not only an expert in love and dating, but he was our sound engineer kind of today. <laughs> you can give yourself a proper introduction. Sure, sure. My name is JT Tran, and I am America's number one Asian dating coach. You I was are? formerly a literally rocket scientist. That's what I studied. Until I discovered that finding love and romance literally is rocket science because I could not figure it out. And then for the you life figured it out. I figured it out. I'm still figuring it out. You know, any any day where I can understand maybe 40 percent of what a woman is thinking is a good day to me. I can't understand what I'm thinking half the time. So for a guy to understand that we were just talking about that yesterday. Yeah. No, I was like, why am I crying? I don't know. We were freaking out. We don't out. know. A lot of women had like internal panic attacks this weekend. We don't know if it's because of the moon or what, but I don't know. In general, it, it happens. You know, sometimes life gets to you. Sometimes just balling up those feelings and you know, or like you said, could be the moon. It's got to be the moon. We're yeah. in LA. It's the moon. It's, it's the always moon. the moon. But also, like, is it cute when we do it? Or is it, like, bad when we do it? <laughs> I don't think it's like, cute. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just, like, go to the next room. I'm like, all right, all right, you can handle this. I like that, that you yeah. stay in the home, though. <laughs> like, A you lot of guys want to leave. I always try to trap the guy in the home. I'm like, we are figuring this out now. <laughs> Together, like, yeah. lock hands. I, well, is, I, was, I was lucky enough in college, like, you know, my first college girlfriend and I lived together for, like, three, four years. So what? I know what it's like to be in a relationship. And so she's my first. She's the one who took my virginity. She was this, you know, five foot nine. Wow. Long, pretty girl. Not an Asian. Not Asian. Okay. She, she chose me. Why did she choose you? Um, I asked her. Well, why it not? Was, it was like it was like what I did was completely by accident. I walk into my dorm room because I was a sophomore and she's a freshman, and I was excited to see my friends and I'm like, hey, 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 and there she is, this pretty girl, kind of in the corner. And I'm like, I don't know you. I'm not talking to you, and I walk away. Oh, so because you ignored her. Right, right. But I didn't ignore her because I was cool. I ignored her because I was, like, shitting my pants. Oh, because she was so cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, later on, she told me that um, the reason she was attracted to me was when I walked in, I lit up the room because I was, like, You have that energy. And, like, you everyone do. knew me, you know? Well, that's... It seemed like I was popular, but I'm not. <laughs> that's <laughs> I how I met myself, you. you know? I met you because you were charismatic. Okay, okay. We were at Isabel. Have you been to Isabel? I have not oh, yet. Oh. Oh, that's yet. right. So, that, no, yeah, no. Isabel's in West Hollywood. Yeah. It's like a classy place you go at night. Good date spot. Twinkling mm -hmm. lights. Good dinner spot. Beautiful. Great dessert. Mm -hmm. I was with my friend Joss, and we were just roaming the bar, and it was the end of the night. And I believe you're, the girl that you work with, Katie, mm -hmm. she approached me and was like, girls, you're so cute. Are you YouTubers? She asked us that. We were like, yeah, we're trying to do a YouTube channel. And then at some point, you literally picked me up. Like, you lifted me up yeah. and spun me around. And I was like, this guy's so fun. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't hear from you, I don't think, for maybe six months later when you yeah. asked me to host for you. Yeah. And then I found out that you were a literal pickup artist. Would you... Pick up that, coach. That's the business. You I mean, picked me up, literally. Yeah. But yeah. are you an actual pickup well, I, that's the business, and that's what I sort of, like, used to do. Okay. It's not like, it's a complicated situation in the fact that the business itself is pickup artistry, but what I actually teach, and I was just saying this a little bit earlier, like, offline, was, you know, you got to sell the sizzle before they buy the steak for a lot of my clients. is like, you know, we've got to help them become, like, normal, cool guys before they actually learn how to be, like, super successful with girls. Right. So when a lot of people think, oh, pickup artists is a bunch of douchebags trying to, like, sleep with 100 girls, you got to remember, these are, like, normal kind of, like, Asian-American guys that just want, you know, opportunity to, with girls because we've been taught our entire lives that we are not good enough for American women. Primarily your clients are Asian men? Yes, primarily, like 75% of them are. And I get like white, black, but yeah, the majority are Asian. Do you think it's just because you're Asian they come to you? Or do you think Asian men need the dating advice more than other people? It's a combination of both. Obviously, it's one thing learning, you know, confidence and communication skills from like, say, a six foot, you know, tall, good looking white guy. Versus me, if you can imagine, five right. foot five, very average looking Asian guy. Well, because right? in their Tinder bio, they just need to write their height. Yeah. That's all that they need. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'm six foot whatever. But all they do is write six Ooh. four. I personally remember one time where a girl told me that she does, the reason she didn't date anyone that was shorter than her is because she doesn't want to 
feel like she's hugging another woman. She wants to feel like she's hugging another man. Right. Oh. And so when a guy's like smaller, there's that feeling of being just being more effeminate. Although funny joke, when I was in, in London, I happened to randomly go on um, this girl that I'd hooked up with in London like several years ago. And it, her feed just popped up and I just looked at her profile and she sure tall, did. Yeah. She's taller than me. And on her, her cover, it says, uh, do you know what I call men under 5'11"? Friends. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't call me a friend when we hooked up that weekend. Yeah, Heights are when huge. you gave her the time for life. Height's a huge yeah. thing. Well, Beyond I just, race, that's the, the biggest factor I think women have about men, whether you realize or not, is like, how tall is he? Yeah. So I was this guy's employee one what? time. Yeah. So I was a wing girl. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what... The right, right. So I, we had met you at Isabel, just randomly. Isabel. Isabel. Like, <laughs> completely cold. And then um, I, I think I noticed that you look like uh, Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, My uh, hair used to be darker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I resemble her as much now. No. Uh, Whatever. I can see it now, yeah. now that you say it. I used to look a lot like her. You did notice the Katy Perry thing. Yeah, I think that's what I commented. And then, like, you had said that you're, you're into YouTube... And then I was like, hey, you know, need uh, like a, 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 a TV, like a, a, like a video ho host, host to do like a, a street interview thing. And so I contacted you for that and we did that. And then um, Katie is my primary wing girl. She is awesome. You yeah. would love her. And then not she, Katy Perry, a different nah, Katie. Different yeah. Katie. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> he <laughs> loves Katie's. Man. So just to be clear, let me. Let me Actually define what a wing girl does. Yeah, okay. totally. Because this was my job for probably only maybe four days of employment total. <laughs> I think I only did four nights. Right, right. Basically, the job of a wing girl is um, is to help a, a guy practice, first of all, talking and approaching in a safe environment. Because, the, you know, the, there's that big fear. She's going to, like, scream bloody murder, throw a drink in his face, yeah. or, like, run screaming. These guys are petrified. Him. Totally. Yeah, and be like, yeah. fuck you. Or just exactly. say, yeah, just... Appro People can be brutal. Approaching's hard. Yeah. Easier for students to learn how to talk to a girl when they can actually practice on a real girl. Because there's only so much they can do practice talking to me as a guy. So you would bring the girls like Katie and I out and then we would... Right, right. Because, I mean, this is primarily about men learning how to socialize with women. And you, if you don't have women... It's just a bunch of guys talking. Yeah, right? so it's you like need a that buffer. Room. Right. So you need, you know, for me, I definitely, you know, in the value of having that estrogen in the room so that guys really learn how to talk and empathize and be with women. Because if it's a bunch of guys just being bros in the locker room, then you're just, you know. It's a it, different type of talk. It, it gets a little bit more douchebaggery. Well, I remember like, the guys were like, they were so impressed by him because he <laughs> would walk into any situation. You had so many tricks. And I remember these guys were like, I'll never be like JT. And I was like, no, you got to be positive. You know what I'm talking about. Right, right. You well, have these know. things. I mean, he he like, guys, you don't get how he works a room. Like, no, obviously I'm the, I'm the hottest woman at the comedy store right now. <laughs> and the way he worked me while he we were in the, the sound check. He picked me up at ease about He's working you in the sound check. No, he, he and then the guys would get intimidated by you a little yes, bit. I'm not the hottest. They kind of treated you like a god. Yeah, yeah. They really look up to you, these guys. And they're oh, so yeah. scared. They were so scared. Yeah. I, I, let me give you like a, a scenario that one of my students gave me. He was a uh, army in Afghanistan. Oh wow! And he had been stationed there. And he's telling me about this time. He's in some. You know, Afghanistan, some back wilderness and an MRAP, which is sort of like an up armored Humvee. And this this rocket goes blasting through the front window into the back, blows up the back of this, you know, the, the MRAP, oh it destroys the radio. And apparently when you're being ambushed, the idea is not to hide. The idea is to like charge and attack your ambushers because they don't expect that. So literally he's telling me the story about he jumped out of this basically destroyed MRAP, charges like the terrorists and kills them. And he's like, JT, I'd rather get shot at again than talk to a girl. Oh, my gosh. What are you talking that about? That's terrifying. What are you talking that's, about? That's it's crazy. not that scary. Yeah. It's a different type of yeah. fear, I guess. What it is is, you know, when it comes to, like, getting a bullet, you, you, you know, you understand what that is. It's like you get hurt. and it, there's a, It's there's like a, you know the consequences. You know the consequences. But the fear of talking to a woman is it's a fantasy that you can build up and 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 there is no finish to it. So you think they build up these illusions in their head? Right, because there's no end to it. I mean, what do you mean by that? 
Because, well, the brain, there's this, this idea of neuroplasticity in the brain where what you imagine mm-hmm. in your brain is the same thing if, if you encountered in real life. So if you get rejected in real life, that hurts, sure. But if you keep imagining that scenario constantly, it is like oh getting my rejected gosh. like 10 times. I like, do this like every day. Yeah. I create all, I was like Googling delusion disorder and thought I had it the other day. It was like you create false scenarios in your head and mm-hmm. believe them. And your brain doesn't understand. The or difference. is that anxiety? Your brain doesn't understand the difference. So like the cortisol, like the stress hormone or whatever that makes you feel bad. It keeps on happening. Right. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like a ha- a bad habit. <laughs> so do you feel like you like save people's lives? Like I feel like your career is pretty um, fulfilling. I've had that. I've actually had students. I mean, I can't, I, I want to preface this by saying I'm not a, a, a mental health professional. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. Everything I say is just purely for entertainment. Um, but having said that, I've had students that have told me later, like it helped them from depression. I had one student say that he was going, he was on a path to OD on drugs because Damn. the only way he knew how to socialize was drink, do coke and pop ecstasy. But yeah. once he, you know, take a boot camp, he realized he didn't need that sort of a uh, crutch. So you week. basically were rehab for this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of it is because I work on their mental process is to discover what are the negative thoughts, what we call it the bullshit stories that they're, that they tell themselves. It's like that, that. I need this that, boot camp. That, yeah. It's that yeah, I want detrimental that. behavior, that detrimental behavior um, that gives us false mm-hmm. rewards. Like, you know, as, a, as an Asian guy for the longest time, I thought, oh, you know, white women, black women, any woman is not going to like me because I'm Asian. So I'm just going to get angry at the world, you know. And so that was my false reward. It's like, like an excuse. It's, it's like that martyrdom, you know. It's like, hey, it's not, it's not my fault that women don't like me. It's the world's fault. And yeah. so that's what I would tell myself. But the reality is that, yeah, there's – external factors there's societal factors but there are things that i can control until i accepted that until i like deconstructed the negative thinking oh yeah do you teach nagging no it's not really part of it it's so always, bad, yeah. thank god because i hate really nagging. Backfires. i mean the thing is like it's it's a tactic you know just like anything can be a tactic i but, am a victim of nagging i get yeah. nagged constantly oh i do and then i nag right back and i nag hard <laughs> Say Emily and I were single. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's are there things classes we for women can do. Like, what, yeah, what can we do? Right, right. No, th- there are. It's it is obviously going to be different because um, mm-hmm. men want to hunt. So right. if we hunt, isn't that not a cool? Well, the thing is, like, for women, is it's different because, as I say, like, you know, women are the gatekeepers to sex, but men are the gatekeepers to relationship. Like, Ugh. that's I why I knew that. I was losing once I got in the relationship. Shit. You yeah. give it away. You give the power away the second yeah. you sign that relationship contract. I know. <laughs> we shouldn't yeah. have done that. Yeah. I know. You have all the power when you're not in a relationship. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you know, when it comes to men and women, it's like you decide if you want to sleep with me. There's no amount of magic tricks, pickup tricks that – you know, that can convince you otherwise. All I can do is stack the deck in my favor saying I'm your best option. That's it. I mean, that's all I can do. And how do you do that? Um, what are your... There's an entire class if you want to join that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he like... Yeah, it's like don't give it away for free. Yeah. Like, but, it, it, the it, you know, there's what we call like the three main pillars. It's inner game. This is like your, your mental thought process. Okay. Your outer game. This is your, your physical confidence, your body language, how you look, how you act, how you walk, how you express yourself. And then your verbal game, what you actually say. Also, I just feel the I feel the listeners should know this is kind of off topic. Your pocket square and your so suit is Kate Middleton. Amazing. <laughs> the pocket Thank square you. is fantastic. And like Thank that's you. a thing. It takes a lot for a man to make you have to do yeah, that. Not only are you charismatic, but you do attention to detail. Yeah, yeah like yeah. that's a thing that people overlook. And you it looks great, and I just wanted you to know that. Thank you very much. But don't you think in LA, like sometimes girls like the grunge look? Do you teach guys how to dress or do you tell them to be like true to their own authentic style? I mean, it all kind of depends on the course that they sign up. Like Katie or wing girl Katie is the one that's the, the fashion makeover, but sometimes like it's not in their budget, but generally speaking. Oh yeah. Katie would take them to the Grove and like yeah. pimp them out with new outfits. Yeah. That's and such a some, fun job. Yeah. And for yeah. some people it's more like, you know, what they're trying to embody is a certain kind of sexual archetype so that women know what kind of, man that they're getting whether it's like grunge or rocker or musician they try to like portray an image well let me like to the same extent just so our listeners psa don't date comics like don't date i've dated male comics and it's a nightmare that's all i'm saying (laughs) this is tristan starchild he ends our show every episode okay (laughs) he's like our last word of wisdom so 
This is JT. This is Star Chong. Hey, JT. I like your haircut. I love your haircut. Oh, thank you. So, JT's a dating coach, and he does primarily Asians, right? Yeah, yeah. And aren't you kind of part Asian? The the verdict's still out. No one knows. He was on a reality show where they're trying to figure out his ethnicity. The last time I checked, I'm the great-grandson of Genghis Khan. That's that's dope. But he's also like six foot two. Yeah, you're really tall. Yeah, that always helps. Star child. So, okay. (laughs) I don't know. What is your strategy for picking up girls? I don't have a strategy. I let them come to me. Damn. Do you teach that? Is, a, wait, is Star Child? Is this like a secret? Is this your clientele? Plot twist, plot twist, Star Child is your client? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of guys move? say that they wait for girls to come to them. That only. Do you think short guys say that? I mean, it's. it's sometimes it's true if the guy it has that sort of look that women want and they'll. Women will approach them, but women will never approach me. I am not a good-looking guy. I'm five foot five. Like I could be. You like, seem taller than five. Yeah, five. look at that pocket square. Are you kidding? Come on. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, like, <laughs> if if you ask guys to simply kind of wait back, then you're just gonna have guys that are gonna be dateless for waiting forever. forever. Right, because society teaches us that we are the ones to approach. It only really works if you're tall, good-looking enough, or you're just the type of guy that that woman wants. Just give like one secret, one line that you say to a girl, like one free, just secret. one thing that you said. Because we were at a people... nightclub and you went up to girls and you said something like. You're like, cheers, ladies. You did, like, the cheers thing. Yeah. What's the cheers trick? But people pay mad money for his shit. But yeah. this is just like, one just trick, one, and I witnessed one free it, secret. so I'm already giving it away. <laughs> he went up to a group of girls. I think they are having a bachelorette. Yeah. And you just went right in the middle, and they were obsessed with you. Yeah. Um, well, the idea of cheers is just the idea of social etiquette. Women, you're, you're trained to be responsive to social trained. pressure. Yeah. Right? Society. This Dark. Is you are act. you a dumb? <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> Flex. She's going to watch. She's crazy. Yeah. But the idea, like, Go you know, she's like a, what we call like the bachelorette opener. So if you girls, like, pretend like the two of you are bachelorettes. And let, let's say Allison is the actual bride to be because she has that makes way more sense. Belt on, okay. So I go up to you girls. Okay. So pretend, pretend, get, in, get into roll, get into your roll. Okay. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Hey, when's the date? May 25th. Oh, I am so sorry. What? Plot twist. <laughs> right? Why? And then they think it's funny. I'm like, wait, well, why are you sorry? Yes. And he's like, oh, it's like, because you're getting married. And it's just Oh, and I like it. that. And it's like, it, it's congratulations because everybody's going to be responsive to being congratulated. Then everybody wants to talk about their wedding. And then I turn around and, and it's and a it joke. Go, goes because for that the, Nick. I, yeah, it's the idea of any kind of comedy routine. Is the reversal? Yeah, the, the surprise. Yeah, yeah. The laugh is the unexpected. Thing. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, and you, and do you feel like when you're going through this, does it become so routine? Like you see them falling for the same tricks. Does that get boring to you? Oh shit, that's a great question. Wish I, I mean, if we're talking about like me personally, when I'm meeting women. What I've learned to do is sort of like turn off that analytical side of mm-hmm. my mind because I actually want to enjoy the process. Right. Because there I know that some people get in the community and they learn this and they're deconstructing like everybody, their, their friends, their family. Like what is their intention? They're trying to seek. Oh, I love motive analyzing and, motives and intention. Because <laughs> like that's behind like everything. But it, it loses you. that spark. And, you know, I've been doing this for over 10 years. And if I was to do that for every single person, it would just, you know, drive me crazy. So I've learned to just – I, I've learned to take people for who they are, whether mm-hmm. they're, you know, enjoying my presence or not. Last thing, how did you even fall into all this? Um, well, like when I when I moved to California, I was trying my hand at everything, like speed dating, like no one chose me, e harmony. I, I, I say get, speed. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's like what most people do in LA. Yeah. 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 Xanax. Um, I did like e harmony. <laughs> I get rejected from e harmony because they said I was too analytical. So I did like everything that I was supposed to do. Like I was making six figures, driving Mercedes, lived near the beach, had like you know this great career. But as an like, as a rocket scientist, yeah, aerospace. He was a little rocket yeah, scientist for like actual low key, high key rocket NASA. science on my podcast. <laughs> Hello, and um, I could not get a date for the life of me. Absolutely, and then I was just you know really frustrated, humiliated, even like you know because here I am supposedly a successful man. And I can't, I can't date. No one will have me. And I thought, like, hey, I'm smart enough. 
and you know I should be able to figure this. And I happened to read this article uh, in the LA Times by Neil Strauss, and it was about mystery. And Ooh. it was like six hundred bucks. And the thing is, like for me, is like the idea of actually trying to learn something. There was no shame in it. I was like, all right, I'm going to learn. And so I went, and that opened my eye to this world where you actually have the ability, and it isn't simply predicated on being white, being tall, being good. Like, you actually have some control. So then you just started, like, deconstructing it? Yeah, yeah. And and I started this this uh, blog called the Asian Playboy blog. It's, wow. It's all sort of and now you're in the, Playboy. Uh, now I'm in Playboy, right? Well, you That's manifested so Playboy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. And then what happened was I gained this huge following, and one day this Chinese-Canadian mother called me up to help out her 16-year-old son who had been harassed by neo-Nazis in high school. And he just he just stopped socializing, and she said like I'll fly you up here, I'll pay you for your plane ticket, I'll pay for your your car and hotel, and I'll pay you like a hundred dollars a day. I, I never thought that it was going to be any kind of job. It was just kind of like this this right. It was like Sex in the City, but for Asian men. That's all it was. And then like people just started paying me. I'm like okay. So you just kind of fell into it. I fell into, it. and it became like more of a calling um, in the fact that. You know, people, Asian guys, just any guy that's not classically good looking because I'll have like old guys, fat guys because they look at me and they realize like I am like them. I am never going to be six foot tall. I'm never going to be handsome. Like David I, Beckham wouldn't teach dating class. Yeah, These like, guys right. would be like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And I, but it's like, you know, yeah, I would hate it, it's him. the idea of like evolution. Like when you're at this. Does he even have a good personality? <laughs> I hate David Beckham. I feel like but he probably do, doesn't have I to like have the one. line of men's briefs that he He does have H&M. good briefs. I <laughs> It's a good line. It was a good one. Sorry. You should just that to your students. So, no. Go to H and M, pick the up David some briefs. Affordable and well done quality. Uh, so <laughs> then it, it just was your calling then. Yeah, yeah, because it became something a, a lot bigger, and this is why I think I get like a lot of more positive press and reception compared to my peers in this sphere. Is because it is more than just about picking up women. It's about empowering a lot of these guys that have grown up with racism thrown at them mm-hmm. who have grown up to believe that they're inferior to other men and who believe and who have been told by Hollywood like the movies that mm-hmm. the Asian guys we do not deserve we're not good enough for American women yeah there's a lot of systematic racism yeah. in there where yeah. it's like oh it's the oh this is the laugh track like oh the Asian guy hitting on a girl is like the funny oh yeah it's not, yeah. It's, not ever the, like, it's like, like yeah. the two broke girls you got that you know kind of Fabi like the boss of theirs and all they do is like make fun of them or you look at 16 candles when you go back to the 80s yeah that, the, what's his name he has a crazy uh, name long duck something or yeah. if you even want to go older, there's like I mean I love the movie itself, but like Breakfast at Tiffany's, like I love Audrey mm-hmm. Hepburn, but they had that racist character, the, the mm-hmm. Japanese, you know, white guy playing. Is it Mickey Rooney playing? Oh, uh, outrageously Jeff, racist! Because yeah, yeah. I actually, it's I always fall asleep when I would try to watch it. Like, <laughs> respect You're not into the classic. All respect. I have a. Po- I used to have, I have a poster in my dorm in college of Audrey Hepburn, but I never watched I it. I try to watch it, but I would fall asleep. But when I did this year, and I was like, <laughs> that character came up, and I was like, this is how. Yeah. Like he's, it's, it's really. I'm gonna go it watch it. But fly. those subliminal messages. Be yeah, it is, them. and it's it's systematic. It's this weird thing that's yeah. like, oh, this is the punchline always, and yeah. it's like and that's it, not okay. It's, it's, it's where the media teaches Asian guys we're not good enough, but it also goes the other way where American Americanized women, including even Asian American women, think that Asian guys aren't good enough for them. Well, Instagram is changing the game because I know that the Kardashians have a really hot Asian bodyguard now that's got like <laughs> hundreds of thousands of followers, and now like everyone is like we, looking we, for that we Asian had, type. We, we ran into him at EPO. You know who I'm talking what? about? You know who he is? I actually I, mean, I don't personally know him, but I was there teaching, and um, I, I didn't crazy. realize he was there until one of my guys said he was. I just name dropped a bodyguard. <laughs> And Love it. Um, what was happening was like he was just kind of like just chilling with, with someone else with like a buddy and really wasn't doing much. But like definitely women were kind of like he ghosted him. my friend. Yeah. What? And she was like, I'm showing up to your house tonight. And he's like, you're not. <laughs> and then she texted him like the longest thing I've ever read. And I'm just like, poor guy. <laughs> mm. See, that's that's the advantage of, of being good looking. <laughs> he's tall. That helps. Yeah, sure. so he's kind of the David Beckham of Asians. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show. I feel like we learned a lot. We did. I came into this thinking it was like 
sleazy almost, like pick yeah. up a sleazy, but I didn't realize it was about emotional intelligence and all the other cool things we covered. Yeah. You're empowering people. I know. I, I feel like I have control of my thoughts now, so we should stop bitching on the phone to each other. That- <laughs> no, I'm going to call <laughs> you tomorrow and talk for an hour. Happen. I'm going to call that you tomorrow and cry. Yeah. Don't you worry about that, Emily. But no, but you, you are doing God's work. <laughs> and then how can we, if anyone out there wants coaching or wants to join your workshop, how can we find that? Uh, website is ABCs of Attraction. That's just ABCs of Attraction.com. There you go. And also on Facebook, Twitter, all that. So check us out. Awesome. 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 And then anything last from Stretch On? Um, check out his class. I think it's a really great. I just want to say from me to you, I think it's a great thing that you're doing because um, I know so many people who need like that, that type of help and they don't know what to do or what to say. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing. And I think you demystify a lot of the the whack part of the pickup game because there is a bad part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, and that puts like a stain on everything. But what you're doing, not only that, and for the Asian community, because I'm usually the first Asian thing girls date too. You know what I mean? (laughs) And he's like barely Asian. And I'm like a quarter Asian, you know what I'm saying? So like. But thank you. Thank you very much. You're changing the whole vibe. And I think it's a great thing. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right. We've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.